Okay. Hi, everyone. My name's Adrian Warnock, and I'm here with uh, Ebby once more. And he's going to talk to us a bit about what it's like to get ready for a stem cell transplant, or what it's like to be a parent whilst your child is Both in terms of the guide, the tests and things that have to be done, but also how you approach that psychologically and what it's like for a family to be in with that. So, Ebby, over to you. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks, Adrian, for this. Also, I want to say thank you to this group for actually supporting our campaign to raise the funds to, for my son to have this much needed transplant. I appreciate this group. And funny enough, Adrian was one of the first people that contributed. And um, by God's grace, under 10 hours with the you know, broadcast of the link and all that, we're able to raise the money, which is a miracle on its own entirely thank you so much um most welcome Ebby. you're most welcome and it was yes. a, a wonderful thing to see that he raises his day so now of course this is where the rubber hits the road isn't it but it has been already it's been some preparation already so talk to us a bit about that. yes yes we 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 had some tests lined up and which we have done most of them um for for clarity's sake um as at yesterday um, or Thursday, we did a full blood count or a CBC, and for the first time in since November, his platelets has stayed at two hundred and seventeen, which is um, a total miracle on its own, without any help, any infusion. So the doctors are saying this is progress. So the tests for a child. Because we are not going to use a total body irradiation for to wipe away any um, cells that are left in his body, because from the test we had a 0.001 percent of leukemic cells. From when we started the chemotherapy, he had over 60 percent blast in his bone marrow. So the doctors are going to use some drugs, chemo drugs anyway in high doses to wipe away the bone marrow before they infuse the stem cell. For, for record purposes, we'll be using an umbilical cord stem cell instead of the normal um, um, parent to child because we couldn't get a complete match and the stem cell was readily available. So we'll use that. Um, as of two weeks ago, they've done what they call a tissue typing. Um, then the test um, we have tied on uh, one. We did a lung function to check the lungs. We also did a heart scan. Um, we did an X-ray first of all, but they told us, no, we need to go back to do a CT scan of the chest. Then we had um, the head, head CT scan. We had an audiology because they said normally the antibiotics they give during transplants can cause deafness. So we have to do that test to find out where it is um, as regards hearing. Um, we also had um, a physio test. Um, we had the dietitians come in as well. Um, we also had... Um, we will this a dental check because they said most of the times um, during the stem cell there is always a possibility of having um, host vessels graft disease in the mouth and in the digestive tract. So, and they also checked out all his teeth, his gums, just to be sure. Um, we had an abdominal scan to check the liver, the spleen the kidneys and all that, just to check that everything is okay. But to the glory of God, all those parameters, he passed them all. And um, the stem cell, we, we're only left with the ophthalmology test, which is just to check the eye as well, to know which part of it is, will need any slight correction because they want him going to the transplant in top shape. So as we will not have to start leaving the transplant now and fighting any other um, part of the body or any of his organs. 
but he's in good shape, in good hands. And um, by God's grace, we have a um, pre bone marrow transplant meeting on the 19th with the bone marrow team, just for them to let us understand what we are going through. But they've given us some booklets to read. Quite scary anyway, but um, at this point in time, we don't have a choice. We I heard we are going, and by God's grace, we'll sail through. Um, we are told that we have to be inside the room for minimum six weeks. Uh huh. Yeah, minimum of six weeks. Then once he's able to, you know, adjust, like for instance, once the stem cell is able to graft with his own, then will be released. And he'll be on he'll be monitored for the next three months again just to check that everything is okay. Mm. So that's just the bottom line. Is 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 a tough one to to gather in your head all together, but with God's grace and God's mercies, and we're enjoying you guys also pray along with us that oh. it will be, you know, it will be one of the it will be a success. And this deadly blood disease won't come back again in the mighty name of Jesus. We hope and we pray that um, it shall be one of the success cases. Like I told the doctors, you have you have the good cases and the bad cases, but our case will be the good. So uh, we have that faith. And my boy too is also in mm. top shape. The, we also had a psychiatric test as well. The psychiatrics had to speak to him, explain to him. And Great Ormond Street, they, like I always say, they are holistic in their treatment. It's not just about the drugs. They're also going to, they also gave us info about the other part of this treatment. Yeah. So that's why we have the psychiatrists, the physiotherapists, the play team, you know. Then they told us a lot of things that they will use to engage the little man so he won't think too much of whatever he is. Then the dietitian came up with do's and don'ts, the food to eat, the food not to eat. And also, we are also being told about the NG tube. If we have the, uh, what's it called? If we have um, the whole bit of graft in his digestive tract, we have to put in an NG tube. So by Wednesday next week, 19th, we'll have an idea of it. But tentatively, admission date for the transplant is on the 28th of May. Mm. All things being equal, we, we are hopeful. We are hopeful. We are hopeful. Thank you so much. So, so, Abby, talk to me a little bit about the impact that this whole experience is having on, on Nathaniel, but also on the family as a whole. I mean, it... You know, to have been in that position where it looked like he was going to die, and then he had chemotherapy to get the cancer under control, and then it worked. Mm -hmm. But then, obviously, now you're facing the next step, which is, you know, and at least the money now has kind of gone away a little bit. But then, now you're facing that step as a family, a little bit of uncertainty, but also the thought of putting your child through all of this. It's quite a sort of, must be quite a traumatic time for you as a family. Is, is that fair to say? Yeah, yeah, to be truthful, if I have my way, I won't have him go through it. Mm. But, you know, we have to do what we have to do because we are told that if we do not go the transplant route, he might have a relapse. At least I forget, yesterday we had a, a, a bone marrow um, biopsy and also some form of treatment to the bone marrow. Um, which is the IT is called Interteca of three drugs, um, which is uh, Cytarabine, Hydrocortisone, and um, Metrotrexate, but in small quantities. Those are just to make sure that uh, um, the leukemia does not move further to the brain. So, but they also took out a part of the um, bone marrow to do an analysis to check the level of the bone marrow again, what yeah. is going on in the bone marrow. But from the blood results we did, we have found out that all his parameters ha 
had gone up, which is a good sign. So the prof is saying that um, he's very sure he's still in remission. So we have this window period to 28 to kick off. It's tough, you know, when they, you know, the doctors, they are very, very um, straightforward. They're going to tell you, look, this is how it is. Transplants, people die. He might not make it, he might make it. So by the time you hear all those things and you mistakenly go to Google to go and check transplant, you see, first advice I have for anybody, if you have any symptoms, please forget Google because you're going to see so much, um, yeah. so much, so much, um, um, the word is so much um, scary news. Yeah. You don't get to find out that there are also good parts of the transplant. I've heard people who've done it for like over 20 years, 30 years, and they are still alive. So, so many bad sides of this transplant, but what do we do? Prayerfully, we have to do what we have to do. Mm. So it's it's just it's tough. Uh, there are a lot of things I can't explain to my family. Um, at this time, you know, but I would give them information ne as needed because I don't want any pressure on me as well. So as needed, I will give them info. But prayerfully, we are going into it, and he will come out a success. Yeah. That's, that's really quite useful. So what advice would you give um, to someone watching this who's either about to enter the stem cell sort of process or, or their child is about to enter the stem cell process? Have you got any sort of pithy advice that you'd like to give them? No, 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 no. There's, no, there's nothing much to say. It's, I, don't wish, I don't wish anyone to go into it. But then again, you have to do what you have to do and be positive that your own case will be different. Mm. So it's about hope, I guess. Yes, hope, hope yes, hope. I, I think hope. that's absolutely, my father had a, a stem cell transplant actually. Um, mm -hmm. His own stem cells given back to him. And um, for him, it was obviously, he'd had a number of treatments. And again, he had quite an aggressive blood cancer. So these are often used in the more aggressive blood cancers to try mm -hmm that it stays away because obviously if an aggressive blood cancer comes back then um you're back in life-threatening situation now mm -hmm. what's interesting about him though was that he got to the point where he was on his his third lot of chemotherapy so he had two different lot types of chemotherapy and he was on his third lot and then mm. he was about to start his third lot and they said to him look these other two haven't worked um mm. so if we we could just stop um but this third one has only got a one in three chance of, of working. Mm -hmm. so, so the doctor said some people would just not bother at this point. They said, look, I've had enough, you know, life and just let me go. Mm -hmm. No way, because he was told that if he didn't take the stem cells, he'd have zero chance of surviving. But mm -hmm. if this chemotherapy, he'd have a one in three chance of being able to then do the stem cells and hopefully be all right. And, you know, and the interesting thing is you can sometimes think one in three chance that means two and three that it won't work and you can focus on the negative mm -hmm. it's just like well look i might have to cling on to hope and mm -hmm. it worked for him and that that was two and a half years ago he had his stem cell and you know so he's doing really well he, in fact he's doing better than me and i didn't have a stem cell but hey uh, that's a whole different story but um so yeah so i think that's a good sort of message for people isn't it to sort of cling on to hope yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to cling on to hope. Hope is just the only thing at this point in time. It's good to have a cry once in a while. Yes. It's good to feel bad. Um, it's good to feel like, why me and all that? But then you have no choice. You see, what I've learned about this leukemia cancer, except a miracle, it is, it is a crazy situation. Yeah. Except a miracle. Like you rightly said about the like my son's my son's case, what they gave him for was for palliative care. You understand? Yeah. The chemo they gave was for palliative. Yeah, just to and make it easier yes, for yeah. just to make him have a quality good quality of life for the next six months. But along the line, um, the doctors just decided to do some some jiggling of the drugs and the boy went back into remission. 
under one month, so which now made them to have a retain, which is a miracle too on its own. So yeah, it's amazing. So it just goes, yeah. straight, isn't it? You there's always something to hope for. I think. Yeah. And yes. Yes, please. There's important. something to hope for. I just intend to focus on the net positives mm. and leave the negatives right away, right now. Yeah. Which because is, there are people people have done transplants and they didn't have one single issue. Yeah, no, exactly. Those are the stories I like to feed in my head now. Yeah, so you go into it with your eyes open, but you go into it hoping for the best. You go into mm. you mentioned that it's okay to have those moments where you feel upset, you're worried, you cry, that's good. Mm -hmm. uh, after all, Jesus cried. If it's good enough for him, it's good enough for the rest of us. Definitely. But but at the same time, to go in there with hope and with confidence. I, I think that's a great place uh, to leave our, our recording today. Mm -hmm. um, so okay. thank you very much for joining us on the recording, Ebby. Okay, thank you so much, Ian.